It is the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. Big time when we discuss everything that happened during the World Cup qualifiers. Who are the winners and losers of the first round of the World Cup qualifiers considering Kenya started with a 0-0 draw against Uganda cranes while Mali won against Rwanda in that group. Now Mali is leading Kenya and Uganda one point apiece and then Rwanda with no point at all. How is it going to fare on as the second matches will be coming up against Rwanda? Kenya is already in Kigali and also Mali against Uganda. We'll be looking at that. Joining us here on the fan zone is Eric Aganya. Eric, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Though had a tough week, Kidogo. Yes. Lost a good friend of mine uh -huh. by the name uh, Shadrach. Yes. He was a good man, Shadrach. Yeah. Uh, we went to lay, to lay him to rest on Monday. Okay. He has really assisted so many young people here in the, in the society, uplifting them in sports. Yes. And many other aspects of life. Yeah. So uh, it has been that tough work for yeah. them but I understand you have been following the world of sports so much what was the highlight of the week when it comes to sports uh, locally mm. my, my, I'll not call it a highlight but a disappointment because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I expected yes. Arambe Stars to win at home uh -huh. because if you're drawing at home uh, in a qualifier then that is disaster yes when you go to Uganda we are in trouble uh -huh. uh, so that was a, a little bit of a disappointment on mm -hmm. my part because yeah. I expected at least a, a, a 2 nil win. <laughs> <laughs> you said that it was a horrible show from Kenya. Mm. I, what I question you earlier about that game. Yeah, because mm. when you look at the stats, yes. Kenya had only three chances mm -hmm. and none of them was on target. Yes. So you kind of think about the team having very skillful players in there but you just can't have a proper game plan to try mm. and attack the game while at, at home. Yes. So if you can score goals at home, I don't know where the goals are going to come from. Mm. But well, I think the most, the, the most disappointing thing was the, the, the midfield not functioning. Yes. Because, uh, there was no supply from the midfield. Yeah. And uh, maybe we are underestimating the, the absence of Wanyama mm -hmm. too much because yes. you, you've seen this is one of the games where he has missed. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the midfield was in shambles. Yeah. Uh, they mm -hmm. could not... Uh, we couldn't keep possession for one minute, two minutes. We yeah. are, two touches, we lose the ball. Uh, yes. you, you can't win a game with such kind of uh, a show. Uh, uh, I, I was talking with uh, uh, my director, Fadili, uh, when we were preparing for the show earlier on, and uh, we had this funny discussion that if this was the group of 2004 that went to the Africa Cup of Nations, mm. that group, uh, th those kind of players, uh, the likes of Mulama, the likes of uh, the Mulamas, we had uh, Musotieno, yeah. Yeah, like Ali Break. Mm -hmm. That team of 2004, if it was pulled in this World Cup qualifiers against Uganda, Rwanda, and Mali, <laughs> we could have made it to the World we, Cup. We will demolish, <laughs> we'll demolish uh, Uganda because if you look at the yeah. brilliance of uh, uh, one Simon Mulama in the midfielder, uh, yes. he, the, the guy was brilliant. Uh -huh. If you look at uh, the likes of Bonifa Zambani mm -hmm. uh, in the yes. attack, yeah. look at uh, Matthew Thomas, the confidence he had in goal. That is, I think, yeah. that's one of the most confident yes, uh, uh, goalkeepers we've had. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a lot of confidence, command. Yes. John Momiruri uh -huh. uh, was mm -hmm. also very skillful. Uh -huh. uh, and you look at that team mm -hmm. and you compare with what these uh, young boys are doing, mm -hmm. you feel so disappointed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the federation uh, mm -hmm. needs to, to, to pull up their socks. They need to mm -hmm. wake up. Huh? That one is a conversation we can never stop having about how we can make our teams work much better. But away from that also, Rwanda also lost to Mali. Yeah, I think it was expected. Yeah. But it was a very good game, high tempo kind of football. And we've all been thinking that Mali is a sleeping giant, but they showed us that they can play awesome football. Yes. How they are counter-attacking, they are keeping the ball well, they are playing it nicely on the surface. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be tough to get out of this group with Mali in there, to be honest with you. And, uh. and if you look at Mali team, uh, yes. you realize that most of them are young people. And uh, a team is built with the under-21. Mm -hmm. You look at the yes. last uh, uh, Youth World Cup, Mali made it almost to the, I think to the quarter-final, semi semi semi-final. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they, they, they like building their team, their young team. Eh? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it's high time we, 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 we ape that and yeah. look at how do we uh, take care of the under-17, under-19, under-21, and under-23 team. Yes. And that, that's actually where these players are actually meet one another before they get onto the senior stage. Yeah, I remember there was a discussion where the likes of Fabregas, the, the likes of uh, the, the, the 
current players who have retired at the moment, they were saying that we actually played in the under-17 World Cup, mm -hmm. under-19, under-20 World before we met in the big mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, big uh, World Cup qualifiers in Africa, where we was also Ghana, age of Ethiopia, courtesy of Wakaso, that game also Ghana might be making their comeback onto the World Cup. Uh, Ghana is what we call maybe a sleeping giant uh, yeah, that yeah. is now waking up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, 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 f uh, their, f their footballing prowess uh, uh, cannot be underestimated. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, <laughs> they've, they've been doing well. Yes. Apart from a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Remember there was a time they pushed to the, uh, the World Cup, they almost yeah. made it to the yeah. quarters yeah. Uh, during the time of uh, Samoa and uh, Suarez. Suarez. <laughs> and 2010. Yeah. Tough, yeah. Year yeah. tough, yeah. tough year for us. Tough year for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yes. uh, the, the, it was expected. Yeah. Uh, now that they are coming up, yeah. uh, and uh, the key is to build a team from youngsters. Yeah. Yes. Youngsters. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the kind of game they play, look at the kind of game Mali play. They put the ball down. Yeah. Yes. And they enjoy themselves mm -hmm. because they are at that age yeah. where they want to one touch move, one touch move, mm -hmm. and it becomes awesome football. Big one there for Ghana also winning their first match against. Uh, Ethiopia in their group and then we also had another sleeping giant that is waking up Chipolo Polo of Zambia 2-1 yeah. against Mauritania. Yeah and mm. again mm. you'll still talk about the same issue about them building their talents from young ages. Yes. Mm. Because I remember I think it was in 2017 when I was watching the youth team play in some games in Tokyo. Yes. We had these young lads that have made their way now to the English division. You talk about Fa 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 Fabrice Sakala mm -hmm. who is a very good player right now he's playing for Rangers. Yeah. Then you look at the person Dakas and mm -hmm. Enokumwepu actually scored on that day. Yeah. These are guys that have been in the team consistently and now they've come into the big level mm -hmm. and they're showing you that if we can boast it in England, we yes. can actually boast it in Africa. Yes. And that's what they did. Well, they are trying their best there on that one. Ian Nacho of Nigeria, 2-0 mm -hmm. against Liberia. <laughs> big one for them. <laughs> big one for them. Yes. Uh, yeah. Ian Nacho is full of surprises. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he's, uh, he's a good player. Do, do you think... Yanacho, at least, is relaxed. I think he's now playing his best kind of football. Yeah, when when mm. when, when uh, 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 the coach was able to to pair pair him properly with uh, Vadi, yes. then he's able to perform because you look at them, they're two different players. Mm -hmm. Vadi uh, is a player who will not hold on to the ball. Yeah. Yes. Needs one pass, mm -hmm. goal. Yes. He naturally will hold on to the ball mm -hmm. and invite the other players into the game. Mm -hmm. So he can play as a, 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 as a, as a, as a number nine alone. Yes. And uh, when Brendan Rodgers uh, found a way in which he can play both of them, mm -hmm. you saw him flourishing. Yes. Because uh, uh, that is, he, 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 in Leicester, it, uh, he's being played to his strength yeah yes his strength where he can hold the ball mm -hmm. uh make a pass and make a run yeah 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 but i guess the situation has a bit changed this season because you haven't seen him feature for a number of games the mm -hmm. first three games he hasn't started in any of them yes and i, I guess the reason for that is because avi Barnes has come back into the team together mm -hmm. with james madison yes and he somehow left them with only one option to play forward and that should be Jamie Vardy, mm -hmm. but it's interesting to see the kind of run he is. And whenever you talk about Nigeria, mm -hmm. it's also good to talk about the kids. Absolute fire. <laughs> 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 Which ones are those? <laughs> they had some, they look like retro jerseys, yes. for the, the ones they used in the earlier years where they have some green strips and then uh -huh. in the middle oh. is white and it's got okay. some curves in it and they look brilliant. <laughs> and, and, and that, <laughs> and that, and that <laughs> tells us uh, more about our, 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 our focus on sports if you yes. compare that with our Olympic kit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> My director is telling me that it's not the best as the previous one that they yeah. had. Yeah. Well, maybe you could, care, you could make a case for it, but it yeah. doesn't fall down be below the others because yeah. They always win in that discussion. Whenever you win, you, you talk about maybe even Arsenal having proper jerseys. Yes. Nigeria has to be there. <laughs> Nigeria is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I thought you were talking about kids when, when you tossed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Then you lost me somewhere there, but you have brought me into that one. We also had some other matches, Zimbabwe, South Africa. They went on a draw there, and also Mozambique and Ivory Coast also starting their opening matches with the 0 0 draws. It is the World Cup qualifiers. Will it be the same for Africa in Qatar 2022 where we see our usual suspects, Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, making it to the World Cup? Uh, most of them, not all of them, yes. uh, may make it to the World Cup, mm. but I'm, I'm, I'm putting Mali there also. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm putting Mali there yes. uh, because, uh, as we said, Mali has been building from down, eh? mm -hmm. and uh, these kids are coming of age, yes. and uh, they'll, they'll cause a lot of problems. But the usual suspects maybe will have yeah. uh, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. But you're seeing suspects like South Africa, they're not going to make it. <laughs> I highly doubt. <laughs> Ivory Coast started uh, in a shaky manner. Yes. Uh, they had uh, their, their roles uh, off pitch mm -hmm. uh, because of their federation and yeah. elections. Yes. yes. Locking out Drogba mm -hmm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. And you see that, that that affects the team eventually, right. the preparation for this. Yeah. And even talking about those now to cap it off. Algeria also, they won easily against Djibouti, eight goals to nil. Uh -huh. But for me, the biggest story was about the two players that are playing in Europe right now, in Riyad Mahrez and Ben Ralma. If you realize they had some blonde hair uh -huh. when they were in England, uh -huh. and going back into that game against Djibouti, uh -huh. all of them did not have the blonde hair on. Uh -huh. And so I decided to go up and check what happened, really. And it was so interesting to realize that Jamel Ben Madi, who is the coach of Algeria, uh -huh told them to get rid of the blonde hair mm -hmm. and return back their hair because they believe in some Algerian tradition. Well, if that is what is working, yeah. then it should be the case for them. But it was good to see Ismail Slimani score a hat-trick in that game and also Baghdad Buneja, a guy mm -hmm. who's been scoring lots of goals, but we somehow don't credit him for the goals he does. But Algeria definitely are going to be there and them being close to Qatar. Probably. <laughs> 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 I'm big one there for Algeria. We've already got one fan in some guitar who probably is betting that Algeria will make it to the World Cup. But before we finish on in this World Cup conversation, we want to go back and talk about the transfer window and the winners and losers here on the fan zone. Because if we don't talk about it, we'll never talk about it. Funny transfer window that came to an end here. <laughs> uh, good finishing, yeah. uh, especially for a team, uh, Manchester United. Yes. Uh, they brought back Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. uh, disappointment for Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they didn't uh, manage to secure the services of uh, Mbappe. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a good transfer window for Chelsea. Uh -huh, uh, yes. Uh, remember last time uh, they had a problem with uh, finishing. Yes. Uh, they've brought in Lukaku mm -hmm. and uh, they've also brought in Sol as mm -hmm. a cover from, uh, from Colo Kante. Yes. Because uh, he can defend and uh, also push the play forward. But there was a discussion that United wanted Sol and Guess, then all of a sudden he goes mm -hmm. to Chelsea. Yeah, 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 he was supposed to come to Manchester. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what happened. Because yeah. uh, uh, it was last minute, and if you look at it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he went to Chelsea on loan. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, Atletico yeah. Madrid really wanted him off the books yeah. to balance their, uh, their books. Eh? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I don't know what happened with Manchester United. Maybe they got overwhelmed by the Cristiano <laughs> transfer <Yeah. laughs> and, and <laughs> forgot to cover. Yes. Because I, I thought he could have added a lot of. Uh, uh, potential, a lot of strength, a lot of, we could have strengthened the team in Manchester mm -hmm. United because uh, we've had a problem with midfield. Yes. Could have really come in to cover Fred yeah. mm -hmm. or remove Fred out of the team yeah. and uh, he comes in because he's a player who can hold mm. and also move forward. Move forward. And yeah. uh, Manchester United, uh, they, I think, uh, they, uh, uh, they, they, fall, they fell short because they lost on uh, the, the young kid who went to Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Rene, mm -hmm. and then yeah, now Kamavinga. Kamavinga. Kamavinga, and yes. then they, they, they now lost on uh, Seoul, and yeah. that is uh, one area they needed to strengthen. Yeah, you, and even the other guys who are being mentioned, like mm. Ruben Neves from Wolverhampton Wanderers, and also yes. another guy who has performed very well this season, Wes Bissouma from Brighton and Oval Albion has been performing well, and maybe to that fact that mm. probably Cristiano Ronaldo made everyone go crazy. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. when you visit the Manchester United Twitter page, it's all Cristiano. <laughs> Every six hours there's a post about Cristiano Ronaldo and you yes. may not understand what is going on there. <laughs> but for CDM, Manchester United has been something that we need to work on. Yes. Because right now with McTominay out, having Fred, you look mm. at the games he had against Southampton, he was clearly put on skates by a very young player in Divlomento. Yes. And then you look at the other game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, Trincao was all over him. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be a position that we should see. When you look at the winners, we can talk about Manchester United, you can talk about Chelsea actually mm -hmm. being uh, in the winning side of this one, Paris and Germain being also on the winning side when it comes to this year's transfer window, getting most of the best players yeah. experienced and for free. And for free. Yeah. The likes of Ramos, Guanladam, Messi all coming in. Let's look at the losers. Arsenal, 
Will you Arsenal, put them on the losing page or the winning page? Uh, the losing page, of course, mm. because uh, they went for Ben White. Yeah, mm. 50 million. Uh, 50 million that, uh, I think that was a rip-off. Yes. <laughs> Same because, case for Ramsdale, 30 million. Uh, yeah, 30 million. Mm. Uh, I think uh, they didn't perform well in this transfer window because yes. they didn't bring in what they needed. And what yes. they needed is uh, uh, an established player, mm. an experienced player a team leader in the dressing room. Yes. And they didn't bring in a, play, a player with a winning mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see that in the past they've lost uh, players like William, they've lost players like... Uh, Bellarine. Bellarine. Yes. They lost uh, Luis uh -huh. in the past. Yes. And you don't have those winners. Mm -hmm. And then um, you don't have that player who will rally your team behind. <laughs> and if you look, you look at last season, yes. uh, they didn't do much uh, mm -hmm. from, win, from losing position. Yes. Yes. When they concede the first goal, mm -hmm. there are very few came, games they came up and and won. Mm -hmm. So you need that player who can rally. You need a Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. You need a, you, you need a, you need a, 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 maybe a, a Sergio Ramos in that mm -hmm. dressing room yeah. who will tell this kid, let's go. Let's do it. And you saw it against uh, against Man City yeah. when they were playing Man City. The first uh, five minutes, they had the better chances. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they could not put them away. And then the game turned. Yeah. And uh, uh, the people they are relying on, like Shaka, are the ones who are making mistakes yes. Yes. and getting red cards. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine is telling me that uh, Arsenal, mm -hmm. they also lost in the transfer window because they did not get a good manager. Well, <laughs> maybe that could be true. <laughs> and I think it is true. <laughs> I mean, when you, you go back to some of the decisions he's made, not only yes. on the field, but even off pitch. Uh -huh. The way he's been talking about the players that he's let go. Yes. Even Mesut Ozil himself, I don't believe he's a man mm -hmm. who should have left that team. Yes. And again, you look at a guy like William Saliba. Mm -hmm. He has been sent out on two consecutive loans mm -hmm. to St. Etienne. Then he went to Marseille at Nice. Right yes. now he's scoring goals for that team and he's keeping clean sheets. Mm -hmm. While right now they are using Chambers and Colasinas in their mm -hmm. defense and you wonder what's the problem. Yes. The same case applies to a guy like Gwendozi, mm -hmm. who left the team. And right now he's scoring goals and assisting for Marseille. Yeah. You wonder again what's happening to the club. Yeah. But for Mikel Ateta, probably that could be the reason because you look at how he's fielding the team. Colasinas should not be in that team. You look at how he's fielding up. For example, you look at the Chelsea game, for mm -hmm. example. Chelsea are playing a back for a back three with two wing backs in there with Alonso yes. and Rhys James and he decides to play a back a back four. Comes in the second game again against Manchester City without a natural number nine, he plays a back five. Mm -hmm. Shambles everywhere. I think I think maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's uh, uh, it's he has no option. Yeah. No, the no, players he has yes. uh, he's using what he has. Talking about, also go, <laughs> <laughs> talking about also losers, let's not talk only about Arsenal. I've got another one in mind. Barcelona must also yeah. be losers in this transfer window because they have lost Messi. Messi they, they have lost, lost uh, Antoine, Antoine and Griezmann. Yeah. And they've pulled Samuel Umtiti over the, the road and he's been yes. stained everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's been bad. And that's something that was coming in mm -hmm. because of the bad management they had over the years with Bartomeu in charge. Yes. And right now it's coming to hit them that they are over the salary cap. They need to release players. Mm -hmm. It happened for them last season. They let go of Luis Suarez, mm -hmm. went to a direct rival and won the, the league with that team. Mm -hmm. If that was not enough, they are now lending in Antonio Griezmann again to yes. the same club again. Mm -hmm. You'd expect them to win the league again mm -hmm. right now with a very strong starting 11. Yes. Lionel Messi is gone. You have not relied on us, Fatu is now the number 10. Mm -hmm. You haven't let go of a guy like Coutinho, who is still yes. part of the team on high wages. Mm -hmm. Same case applies to Usman Dembele, whom they say that has visited the doctor many times and he's been on the pitch. Yes. Don't understand what's going on at Barcelona. Uh, I think uh, uh, there was a time, I think, early this year, we, we discussed Barcelona and we said that they are in trouble. Yeah. For yes. the next three years, they are mm -hmm. going to suffer. And uh, they have to go back to the drawing board and mm -hmm. build a team for mm -hmm. uh, Yes. And uh, I, I, I pity Kuman because he's going to have it rough yeah. yes. uh, for the next three seasons. He's not going to win anything. Yeah. The building uh, a Barcelona yeah, He's not going side. to win anything because yes. uh, he doesn't have the players who are good enough to do that. Uh -huh. Because uh, they brought in players with a lot of money, Osman Debele, yes. uh, who has not even assisted them. Assisted mm -hmm. them. Yes. And the games where he's been fit, he's on the bench. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when he's not fit, uh, he's with the doctors. Yeah. They've <laughs> lost. <laughs> uh, they've lost uh, uh, Lionel Messi, who mm -hmm. has been their talisman, yes. and that calls to uh, player power. Because uh, mm -hmm. when you read the great finds, you realize that Messi was calling the shots, mm -hmm. and now he's left. Yes. And uh, I read somewhere that Aguero was bitter because uh, he went to uh, yeah, to Barcelona to play yeah. alongside Messi, and then yeah. Messi left. Uh, and I think so, also yeah. when you talk about them having a weird transfer season. Yes. Let's not forget the fact that they have remained with Brotherweight mm -hmm. and they have signed Luke De Jong 
-hmm. a man who played for Newcastle United, who is now being part of that team in the front, yeah. Miralem Pjanic, whom yeah. they signed, has now gone to Besiktas. Yeah. A transfer deal, the swap deal that was never understood in this world when you swap Miralem Pjanic mm -hmm. by, uh, by taking out other, who is younger, actually. Well, big one there that is everything that we have been talking about in the transfer window. Talking about also, quickly as we finish this conversation, talk about strengthening your rival so that you can beat others. How come Manchester United has to sell gems to Leeds? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 That's what Liverpool also did. <laughs> yeah, we had to sell him after beating them. So yes. <laughs> uh, uh, James will uh, will be, will assist Leeds to beat our rivals. Mm -hmm. And uh, you find that rarely do you find a. Uh, 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 a team selling to a direct rival. Yeah. And that's where Barcelona yes. baffles me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. How do you sell to Atletico? We've seen in history, <laughs> yes. uh, in history in, 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 in Manchester United, uh, there was a time Gabriel Haynes wanted to go to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, Ferguson said, no, you're not going to yeah. directly can't sell happen. Them. It yeah. can't happen. It won't yes. happen. Look mm -hmm. at the case of Harry Kane. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Levy refused. You're not yeah. going to strengthen Manchester United mm -hmm. or Manchester City, City. Yes. Uh, who are directly uh, mm -hmm. our rivals. Yes. Uh, so. You, uh, that's what baffles me with Barcelona and Arsenal. Yes. Arsenal is uh, <laughs> sells one pass to Manchester United, yes. one pass becomes the top scorer. And yeah. uh, you see, it shouldn't be happening. Yeah, right. And actually, even talking about the big winners, yes. you will have to put Spurs in there uh -huh. because it's not only the players that l that you bring in, but even the ones you keep. Yes. And Daniel Levy was really praised for that move where yeah. he blocked the move to from for Hurricane to move into Manchester City. And again, you look at the signings that they have made. Mm -hmm. He brought in Emerson Royal, mm -hmm. who apparently the royal name came in mm -hmm. from a character who is in the Swedes. Yep. But apart from that, they also <laughs> yes. brought in another goalkeeper in Golini from mm -hmm. Atalanta. They brought in a defender. Mm -hmm. They swapped a deal from Eric Lamella, who yes. wasn't really helping the team. And they brought in Bran Hill, mm -hmm. who is an important prospect for the team. I think that was a good move I, by Spain. I also think yeah. the best signing was the coach. No, uh -huh. yeah, yes. no, 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 was the best signing yes. because uh, Nuno uh, has a way of managing uh, with a small budget, mm -hmm. and uh, you've seen uh, he's the only one who is unbeaten as per now. Yes, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have nine points; they're uh -huh. on top of the league, and uh, they've not had easy games. Yeah, and they're not uh, and they are going they're not to chase for a top four position. They, yeah. they, they, they will, uh, yes. because look at what uh, Nuno was able to do with Wolves yes. uh, throughout. Yeah. Uh, he brought them up and he Finished kept them up. Uh, Finished seventh yeah. without bringing in reinforcement. Yeah. Look at the players that uh, he has okay. been able to, to uplift. Yeah. Uh, Ruben yes. Neves, nobody knew about him. Yeah. Yeah. Adama Traore, nobody knew about him. Yeah. Uh, they can be attributed to, 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 to Nuno Espirito. So I think their biggest, uh, uh, apart from the hurricane story, yeah. is getting the right coach. And uh, mm -hmm. you understand, he was not even on their shortlist. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he was almost a 40-second guy. Yeah, he was not you. even on... Yeah. <laughs> 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 this guy was being considered for the total of job. Would have been considered <laughs> one. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> Except to Dodo. Yeah. And again, maybe yes. to, to that. I, I'm wondering why Arsenal didn't go for him. Yeah, actually. They should have gone sure. for him. Yeah. He should have managed yeah. that team properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, with the budget they have, eh? because he has experience in those areas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And maybe even to that Daniel James effect. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you're going to forgive a fan who thinks this way. Daniel James was wearing number 21 for Manchester United mm -hmm. and they thought that this would be a very good opportunity to let go of Daniel James, mm -hmm. have Addison Cavani who wears number, 29 for, number 21 for Uruguay, yes. comes in, wears number 21 and leaves number 7 for Ronaldo. Maybe yeah. that was the case and you would <laughs> forgive the board for doing that. That's a Manchester United fan. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a rumour that the Queen also requested for... No, that's yeah, not a rumour, it's, it's true. It's true. true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And wow. that speaks to the volumes that Cristiano Ronaldo is on a different level. No matter how the pundits come out, like Mr. Gabi Abonaho, yes. who came yesterday to say that Hurricane is better than Cristiano Ronaldo, will pick him in a cup final, Cristiano Ronaldo will remain to be the greatest of all time. Leaving the transfer conversation aside, because we looked at it and everything that has been happening, and coming back to the World Cup qualifiers more so in Europe, Cristiano came back also in top form. In the game they played against Ireland. Yeah, yeah mm. Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, mm. Even before I go to him, I want to to, to to condemn whatever happened in the game against England. Yeah, oh, wow. uh, yeah. The racism. We shouldn't be talking about that in the 21st century. Mm. Yes. Uh, and uh, these guys, uh, they, we should have docking of points. We should have. They should be yeah, banned. Band, yeah. uh, the teams uh, should be responsible, mm. and uh, they should be forced to play in empty stadiums, yeah. so mm -hmm. that uh, we show the world that this is nonsense, and this nonsense cannot be tolerated. 
Ronaldo. Mm. Uh, coming back to Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has uh, 20 different records uh, that he holds, mm. and that is not a mean achievement. Yeah. But what I like about him is uh, his spirit and his winning mentality. Yeah. Remember in the game he lost a penalty yeah. and uh, came and scored two. Yeah, and to uh, a Shamrock, Shamrock Rovers goalkeeper. Uh, yes. So you, you, you find that uh, uh, in a game, uh, if you play the game of football and uh, you lose a penalty kick, mm. it dampens your spirit. Mm. This guy, it doesn't do that. This yeah. guy, yes. it lifts him more. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, he's, he's a winner. Yeah. And uh, he's going to lift up Manchester United, and uh, he's, he, he has really uplifted uh, the game of Portugal. Mm. Uh, you look at the time he's been there; mm. uh, they've done exemplary well. Yeah, and to that record, actually, he's played 50, the last 52 matches. He's got 53 goals for the national mm. team, and just to add to that, he's got a way of silencing the critics because every time they come around and say that he's got tired legs. Mm -hmm. You see him scoring two goals in crunch time for the team. Mm -hmm. He is on a different level, really. And you look at even his body, I guess that's something that many people have looked at when he was 18 and right now when he's 36. Both bodies look similar. It mm -hmm. doesn't seem like he's going to slow up anytime. He's back to where he belongs, that's why he says so. And when you look at the Manchester United lineup, it's scarce more so on paper and on the field of play with the kind of players that they have at the moment. And being in last season, I think four semi-finals, making on to the European final, never winning it, Cristiano might be that last spark that comes in to win that trophy. Yeah, and uh, not only Cristiano, but mm. also Rafael Varane. Yes. If you look at uh, the game against uh, Wolves, Wolves mm -hmm. uh, his organizational skills, yeah. his yeah. covering of his, uh, his, his fellow uh, defenders, and his communication. Mm. Yes. Uh, because that is what has been lacking in, the, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in Maguire. Yes. Maguire doesn't have the pace, and uh, he's good, but he doesn't have the pace. Yeah. Varane has the pace, Varane has the command, yeah, let's speak, let's speak. And, uh, and the experience. He has mm -hmm. played to the, uh, at the highest level. Yes. So we have two players who have come in who have played at the highest level. Yes. Even Jordan Sancho at an early age, he played mm. at the highest level. Yes. So the Manchester United dressing room is full of winners. Yeah. And uh, Cristiano, Ronaldo, is also yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to score a lot of goals. Yeah. A lot of goals. Mm -hmm. That is that is for sure, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, because with the supply that he has, look mm -hmm. at how Pogba picks those passes. Yeah. Yes, imagine Pogba picking that pass. Cristiano Ronaldo will score. Yeah, and that's yeah. a very good headache for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to have right now with lots of qualities and the depth that he has. Yes. Probably we want to see whether Mason Greenwood is still going to continue play from for United at a, at a starting position, yeah. but also to. On a light note, and he has started very well in mm. the league. Yeah, and even the reports coming through is that he has won the Agas Player of the Month, yes. of which it was deserved because every shot that he puts in there, no matter the full right foot, left foot, back of the net. And three, also, three matches, three goals. Yeah, three yeah. matches, three goals. Yeah. And crucial goals. Uh, crucial goals against actually. Wolves is the goal that won the, the, that yes. won the game. Yeah. And those, those, those goals are the ones that win the league. Yes. Yeah. Those games you win 1-0. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's also so interesting to see him not get into the England national team, but for a very good reason yes. by the family and Manchester United, for him to have come up with a decision for him not to feature because he had lots of stain, especially after what happened when they went to Iceland with Phil Foden. Yes. And for him to develop his career slowly, I think it's a very good move for them. But on a light note about Christian Ronaldo and that game against Ireland, we should thank him for ripping the jersey off because it gives him time to train when he soon. A big one there in the World Cup qualifier. Spain lost their first World Cup qualifier in 28 years. 28 years. They have never done so again mm -hmm. as Sweden. Mm -hmm. Also another team that uh, might be tough for them. They might be to get to the World Cup, yes, but the journey there might be longer for them. Uh, they are, they, it's a team in transition. Yeah. If you, they, they've lost their legends, uh, the, the legs of Gerard Piquet yeah, uh, uh, are retiring, Ramos are retiring, yes. yeah. and um, they're bringing up, they're building a new team. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you're a team in transition, you're building a new team, it takes time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it will take him time. Mm -hmm. Even at the Euros, uh, nobody expected them to, 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 to make it to where, they, uh, to, to where yes. they, they made it to the semis. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll struggle mm -hmm. uh, to reach the uh, World Cup. And even if they reach there, they may not do much. Mm -hmm. But in the next two or, or so seasons, yeah. they will up, they will be up because yeah. you find that they have brought in uh, young kids yeah. mm -hmm. who need experience, who need time blending. Remember, they had a team that had blended for quite some time. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, the likes of Kina under uh, the Bosch, the likes of Kina Iniesta, yeah. uh, uh, Xavi, yeah. Ramos. Okay. Uh, uh, Vivia. Mm. Uh, they, it was a compact team. Yes, so all of those are no longer there. Yeah. So they have built a new team.
it will take them time. Yeah, but again, it was so interesting also to realize that there is not much of a difference that you've seen from that team to the one that we saw in the Euros in mm -hmm. that they failed to convert most of their chances. Yes. And that's something that they need to work on because right now they are playing with Gerard Moreno up front with Alvaro Morata and Farhan Torres who's been good for Manchester City but they just struggle to score the goals and you can understand right now with Sweden beating them it gives a chance to Sweden to qualify in front of them and you read the newspapers and you feel like there is some kind of a shock to the nation that they might actually fail to qualify to the World Cup. Yes. Yeah. Well, Giants <laughs> <laughs> are falling, they're falling big. <laughs> the, today you are really surprising me. <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. Spain not in the World Cup and it, it's not a good show. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I was reading the newspapers. Yes. Okay, they are written in Spanish, but yes. they are shocking because they don't understand. That's what even what the fans are thinking of the Spanish team. Yeah, and, and, because and, they're looking and, at it with the quality they have. Yeah. They they have a guy like Sergio Roberto still in that team. They are wondering where do we go from here because now it was a big surprise also, but that Pedri didn't start the game and they lost yeah. everything in the middle of the park. Yeah. Let, let let's uh, finish up with Italy. Bad homecoming for them a draw mm -hmm. against Bulgaria in the World Cup qualifiers after winning the Euros. I think they are tired. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they are tired. Yeah. Uh, they are still in a uh, uh, celebratory mood yeah. uh, because whatever achi they achieved at the Euros mm -hmm. was not a mean feat mm -hmm. and yes. nobody expected. Uh, but I think uh, 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 Roberto Mancini has a way of uh, bringing back the team. Mm -hmm. uh, the draw is a slip mm -hmm. and um, they, will re they will come up and, and do yes. it. Yeah, and uh, even talking about that result, actually it was a record for Italy uh -huh, and Roberto yes. Mancini because that marked 35 games without them losing a game, which extended their record to, I think, the Brazil team of the 2003 and then the Spanish team that you're talking about mm -hmm. and Vincente Del Bosque. Yes. So not, not everything is lost for that team, mm -hmm. but I, I guess there was a start that was going around that this time around they had a Milan player and they didn't win the game, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> And then we've got Belgium that uh, usually does well in the World Cup qualifiers, yeah. not in the main stage itself, mm. defeating Estonia 5-2 with Lukaku having a press in that one. Uh, Lukaku will score a lot of goals, mm -hmm. and uh, not only for the Belgium team, mm -hmm. and also for Chelsea. Yes. Uh, he's a good finisher, mm -hmm. despite a poor uh, first touch. He has a very poor first touch, mm. uh, but uh, he's a fighter. Yes. He's a fighter. What baffles me about Belgium is that, uh, uh, and, uh, and maybe Netherlands is one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how come they never they show up, in big uh, show up or, or when they expected to show up on uh -huh. big yes. occasions? Because mm -hmm. if you look at the Euros, the World Cup, they're nowhere, they're nowhere to be seen. Yes. The qualifiers, they'll hit people 5 2, 5 1, mm -hmm. 6 nil. Leading the FIFA and on rankings. Paper, on paper, they have a <laughs> wonderful team. Yeah. Yes. If you look at the Belgian team on paper, you'll be scared. Yeah. And now, I don't know. Is it uh, Marti uh, Martinez who is unable to, <laughs> to lead them, past to the lead them uh, the through home. that? I, yes. I don't know. Yeah, but it was a good game also for Lukaku. But against Estonia, for me, they were shocking in how they defended. There's been that goal that has been replayed over and over again where Lukaku got the ball and he backed off the defender almost yes. three times uh -huh. before just turning up and shooting a goal. I think the level of position they played against, yes. for them having considered second minute, it was a bit of a shocker about how they responded. Good game from Hans Vanaken, who's proving to be a very good player. The same yes. case to Fokett, mm -hmm. but a good game too. I think Belgium will always beat these teams in the qualifiers, and even Lukaku himself. Yes. We waited for him to perform against Chelsea. He didn't. Don't know about his pedigree when he has to come up with the big boys. Well, tough one there. As a, also German Hans Flink also starting with a win against Liechtenstein, China. two nil. Wana and Sane, Leroy Sane there for Germany. At least Timo Wana scored. Because <laughs> 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 that, yeah. that has been a problem. Maybe mm -hmm. the previous coach was the, was the problem. Mm -hmm. And now that uh, uh, the new coach has come in. Mm -hmm. But what I think uh, the German team didn't perform well because they had nothing to fight for yes. at the Euros because the coach was going. And mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the change of guard has brought in new blood, new injection. Yes. And uh, we are going to see younger people coming in. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the old guard leaving slowly, yeah. yes. aging out the, the likes of Mula mm -hmm. and uh, bringing in uh, more of Leroy Sane yes. and uh, Ginabri mm -hmm. to come and pull the strings. Yeah, and due to your part, actually, 
he's bringing on these young lads. When yeah. we talk about Jamal Musiala, who is mm. now the biggest star, yeah, he's, he's coming in from Bayern Munich. Yeah, yeah. He had an assist in that game. Same case to a young guy from Bayer Leverkusen in Florian Witz, also coming in. Mm. Adeyemi being brought in a left back also was a very good player. Riedel Baku from Wolfsburg also very good for the team and also to see a player like Marco Royce get back into the team it was so interesting yes. but the biggest takeaway for me was Robin Gossens he's got mm -hmm. a very bad injury and I hope that he's going to recover soon finally one player was in the transfer window but never managed to leave the, the club he was but uh, here he might sign a pre-contract with Real Madrid in January has got to be Kylian Mbappe Paris Saint Germain. I think he was really disappointed because uh, he came out clearly and said he wanted to leave. Mm. Yes. And uh, Real Madrid, uh, I was reading on my way here, they had seven different contracts yeah. <laughs> uh, drawn from out Mbappe. Yeah. from Mbappe. Yes. So uh, they, 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 they gave it the last push uh -huh. and I understand that they, they made a bid of around 220, mm. uh, which uh, uh, Paris uh, uh, rejected and knocked it over. Mm. So he's a player who really wants. Uh, to leave and uh, maybe in January he will leave. But if you look at the, 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 the first two, three games, he's been their talisman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really performed, so mm. he was putting on a show for Real Madrid. And um, he, he must be very disappointed wherever he is. But then I don't know what that speaks to what we have right now in football, that you can have a club like PSG with all the money that he's got, yes. that Real Madrid are ready to offer around 200 million euros for him. But for PSG being the wealthy club they are, are able mm -hmm. to knock down that contract, yes. knowing very well that Kylian Mbappe will leave in the summer for free. Yes. I think it was a power struggle between the two of them that one wanted to stamp the authority and say, hi, we are Real Madrid, yes. we are the biggest club in Europe mm -hmm. and we'll take your best player. Yeah. But PSG this time round came again in another statement and saying we are the wealthiest club, <laughs> we'll retain our player and we'll give you for free. Yes. Yeah. Well, big matches that will be coming your way today, we've got... Uh, Ireland against Azerbaijan, Serbia versus Luxembourg, Finland versus Kazakhstan, and then France will be away to Ukraine. That's when they will be kicking off their World Cup qualifying match against Ukraine. Mostly done for France. They can win this one for free. No, it's not no, done. It's not easy. It's no. not done because you look at their last game. <laughs> <laughs> they played against Bosnia and they drew one all. Yeah, yeah. And again, we talked about the post mortem of the Euros and we are talking about. And Ukraine about was the best team. Yeah, and <laughs> one also, of the best. Yeah, and also yeah. we are talking about whether France will rem re remain with Didier Deschamps and the decisions yes. he's been making. Once they drew that game against Bosnia, the mm. stories emerged again. Didier Deschamps is not the right man. How he plays in Jules Kunde at right back for him to have had a very nasty tackle on Kolasinac, yes. which Arsenal fans celebrated and I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> but for France, they yes. really need to win this game. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about the combination between Benzema, Griezmann and Bappe. And now Bappe is injured, he's going yes. back to PSG. That was their seventh game and they haven't seemed to tick. That should be a concern. I, I think the coach has, uh, has, outsta has over, over, overstayed. Mm. Yes. And uh, he should have left after the Euros. They, 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 they should release him and get hold of Zinedine Zidane. Yeah, and also, I think also, even if I'm a fan of Real Madrid and I love Benzema a lot, yes. I think Olivier Giroud should have stayed as part of that team, as that central number nine who was at the ball and created the chances for the others. Right now, it just it does seem to work with Benzema up front. Well, tough one there for France, but I think it will be the best gain of the World Cup qualifiers considering that Ukraine made it to the quarterfinals yeah. of the Euro. It will be the best game to watch today. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it will be a difficult game actually yeah. uh, because uh, Ukraine are not a pushover mm. and uh, they're going to, 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 to give France a, fight, a, a run for their money. And uh, uh, France is a team that is disjointed at this particular moment because uh, the, the coming in of uh, Karim Benzema has pushed Griezmann to play so deep and uh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. It's not working. Yeah, and also playing Thomas Lemar right now with the form that he is on right now is not really good for France. So lots of things to ponder for Didier Deschamps. But for Ukraine, they look really good and I would expect them to give them a challenge. I remember in the last game, they, France won 2-1, but it was a real struggle. So. Maybe you should expect the same, but again, what you should expect this weekend, I'm still waiting for FIFA to come up with a statement on Hungary and the, <laughs> and and the and bad uh, show we <laughs> had on that performance with yeah, that. I, yeah, I guess they're called the Kabardian Brigade. Yes. It was poor from them, not only in that game, but even in the Euros. Yes. No game should be played at the Puskas Arena. I'm trying to look for the results of the rugby game because we have come to the end of the show. 
I don't know which one is going to be there, but last one you checked, what was the score? Yeah, I left it at 6 nil. Cabras leading at that time. Mm. Thanks to two penalty points by the player we were just mentioning there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you told me it was early, eight minutes to go. <laughs> yes. well, yeah, we should believe that yeah. it's still early for the game. So we hope that it's going to be an interesting clash. And I hope to go home and rewatch it. Well, that is where we leave it here on the touchline today. I'm Robert Osoro. Thanks a lot, Eric Aganya, for coming through. And Sam Gitai here, who was my co-host today. I hope you have enjoyed it, man. Yeah, I've really enjoyed being a co-host. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably. <laughs> the first people, people have to be listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, want to say, you want to say greetings to your people at home? Uh, well. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in a good word for you. <laughs> I'm Robert job, Osoro. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. And for the technical team, Tunasema Asante Sana. Good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast here on Y254.